Hello YouTube, I'm bored out of my mind with lockdown so I thought I'd talk to you for a bit. Um, now if you are watching this um, and you think the audio quality is bad, it is. I've currently got a blanket suspended on camping poles and blue tack around to try and reduce the inevitable echo. Um, and if you don't like the audio quality, you should have really clicked on a better channel, shouldn't you? Um, so I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about photography. Um, you may know I'm quite into that. You may not. I re it's really not relevant. Um, if you are watching this, it's because I've decided that the video is not low, is high enough quality for it to be worth your time looking at these pictures, but not so high quality that I think there's any risk of anyone um, attempting to nick them because I will I I think that some of these are rather good and if you disagree with me um, I I challenge you to a duel frankly I, some of these are okay and I, I I would I wouldn't nick them but you get the gist anyway so um, I'm going to start actually not in this folder I'm going to start in this folder which stands for Lightroom which is a beautiful beautiful piece of um, software. And I'm going to go to Don Melvey's 21st of the 5th, 2020. Um, and that was my exercise, and you're allowed to drive to exercise now, so I did nothing wrong. Um, now, something I like to do sometimes is um, go up a hill and sit on the side of that hill and wait for an aeroplane to come. I don't know if an aeroplane is going to come, and uh, that's that's probably what's quite so sad about it um yeah i'm i'm so into airplanes i'm willing to sit on the side of a mountain for however many hours um just waiting for something to come past maybe um yeah so this is a c-130 Her super hercules that from the raf that came past and um I'm just going to talk through what I think about these pictures. Um, now, obviously, this one's crap, but I just I decided to Lightroom it anyway because I, you know, why not? It's not like I've got anything actually to do. Oh, wait, I've got five exams. That doesn't matter. Anyway, so this is the first semi all right one. Um, I don't think it's quite sharp enough, personally. I think, um, I'll be honest, my telephoto lens isn't the most expensive. Um, so it seems like it's not maybe focusing on the Hercules, but it's more focused on the background because um, as you can tell, if that's um, a 480 millimeter um, focal length and that's cropped in and a Hercules is massive, that would be um, 40 meters or uh, just over 100, 120 feet for those of you who use proper units. Um, oh, I should make a video about that. I absolutely should not use, make a video about that. Um, yeah, I like him, I basically, I like to do maths in metric, and I like to understand the world in imperial. That's how I do it. It's probably because I'm British. Um, so because it's such a long focal length and there's the compression, um, having your focal point on the background isn't the biggest, um, isn't an enormous tragedy with this picture. But um, obviously it's not ideal, and you can notice it's not maybe the sharpest picture. Um, this one, um, again, similar story, although because it has travelled however many um, feet, yards, metres, I don't care, um, in the time it took um, between those pictures, this one is also not very sharp. Uh, this one, however, is sharp and are oh, with um, the just standard image viewing thing that you get with Windows. When you have a very high resolution picture like this it sort of loads in halfway and it sits like that for a couple of seconds then it fully loads in and those few seconds between it going from okay to oh that's nice and sharp are, are stressful because um you don't you know it may increase you know jump to that higher resolution or it might not and you might just have a mediocre picture but i really like this one um you've got pretty good resolution here you can, you can see everything it's nice and clear um and of course you've got the um hot gases coming out of the back of the turbo props there which is very nice um that one i'm not overly you know i'm not over the moon with it's a bit 
um, soft again. Um, I think what happened there is if you take a picture on um, shutter, on burst mode even, say um, with my camera you can take um, 5 frames a second and if you're shooting um, high quality JPEG and RAW you've got a buffer of 6 pictures. So you're shooting for 1.2 seconds. And in 1.2 seconds that um, Hercules can travel quite a long distance. So um, if you're not constantly changing your focal point throughout taking pictures then one of them's going to be sharp and then as you go on they're going to get progressively um, softer. Now you can set your camera to adapt the, um, the autofocus as um, your subject moves but I found that that's never really as good as you know properly taking your finger off the shutter button and refocusing again. So um, I think that may be why that one's not quite so good and also uh, you have to sympathize with me I've been sitting on the side of this mountain for four hours and nothing. I've seen the same bus go past three times. Um, and for those of you in London might think, oh, that's not much. Um, this is the middle of the Lake District. We don't have buses, all right? Well, we do have buses, but not very regular. So seeing the same one go past, what I'm saying is I've been there for a long time. Then something comes past. Imagine you're me and you like aeroplanes too much. Um, you're going to start to you know, shake a little bit with nervousness. Oh, am I going to get, are these pictures going to be good? Which ironically makes your pictures less good. Um, so I'm just going to blame all my failings on self-sabotage. Same thing with that. That's a really dramatic picture. We've got the um, aeroplane is in sunlight. The background is not. It looks really, really dramatic. And then you look a bit closer and you go, oh, bugger, it's soft. So um, that was not quite so good. Uh, this one, this one's all right. I quite like this one. I think it's get about to pop into high resolution. No, it's not. Okay, that's disappointing. Yeah, so that was me. I haven't got much new to say about that one. This one I do like. This one is really nice and detailed. Um, so you can see, obviously, you can see all the panel lines. Really, you can zoom in really nicely and look at that. That's quite good. I think uh, my settings were f5.6, um, ISO 200, and a 500th of a second. Um, and honestly, I think what I prob probably could have done is bumped my f-stop up to 6.3 and gone down to a 400th of a second. Um, because in these close quarters with an enormous airplane like that, um, your depth of field isn't quite going to be big enough to have everything in focus if you're on 5.6. So, um, and I've if we just quickly abandon the Hercules and we go and have a look at um, some F-15s I had coming through. Um, this is a 320th of a second and there's nothing wrong with that. Well, hang on. Boop. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly sharp. Um, now you might be able to tell it was getting towards evening then. I think I had to bump the ISO up to, um, what was it? It was about 400 or 800. It may have been 800. Um, where was it? Oh, 100. Well, ignore me then. Um, basically, my point is I can get away with um, uh, lower shutter speeds especially with um, image stabilization built into lenses nowadays, you can really get away with that. So what I'm thinking um, from next time, and if you do uh, do any sort of photography or you do anything really, this is what you need to do. Anytime you produce or make something, have a look at what you've made and think, right, how can I change next time? So for this one, next time I'm thinking, right, I really don't need um, 500th of a second um, for a start there are advantages to having a lower shot speed because generally speaking, a faster shot speed, clearer photo. But if you can handheld, um, and you really can't do this on a tripod, if you can handhold your camera, um, taking a picture of a moving object at um, a 400th or a 320th, bump it down. Because as you're panning, like I did in this one where I zoomed in on the cockpit, you've got that lovely blur in the background. And uh, if it's, especially if it's a um, piston engine or turbo prop, you can have that propeller blur. So if you think you can knock it down a bit further, then absolutely, um, you know, knock it down. And oh, that good word, Douglas. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, so knock it down. Um, and you don't have to um, make sacrifices with your depth of field and the grain because um, my kit, I really like my kit, um, but it's not professional grade. And honestly, the biggest limitation I've noticed because 24 point whatever megapixel sensor I've got, that's absolutely enough. Obviously, you look at a 5DSR with 50 megapixels and you think, that would be cool. But you can absolutely get away with um, 24.1, 24.2, whatever I've got. Um, the only, the biggest limitation I see myself as having is um, in terms of ISO. Because my camera's um, grain does start to show when you get above um, 400. So I've been at air shows with my dad and um i've looked at his pictures taken on iso 1250 and they look like my iso 200 um because he's got um better kit so i think my stuff's absolutely um brilliant i really love it but i'd say that's my biggest limitation also there's no inbuilt um time lapse in uh, Canon 760D. So you, if you want to do a time lapse, you're gonna have to either buy a trigger or sit there and do it manually. And frankly, I'm not gonna do either. Uh, but I don't really have any reason to make a time lapse. It's not like anyone watches my videos. Um, yeah. So I really like this one. I have seen in the past um, fit pictures of people zooming in on uh, the front section of an aircraft and um, having really detailed. Um, view and i i like that i i've never but i'd never done that before because i'd never been so close to something so big and i would never been able to do it in anything smaller because um i've only got a 300 millimeter lens and with a crop factor of 1.6 that's 480 millimeters of um zoom so i haven't been able to but this being my first hercules to come past me at such a low level i thought i'd give it a go and i think it went all right um and then obviously um, ah, this is where aeroplanes are like people and pets. If you're taking a picture of a person or you're taking a picture of a pet, unless you're trying to do something artsy, um, you need to have your focal point on their eyes. Um, same thing goes for aeroplanes. You you want to be focused on the um, cockpit like I am in here. But, oh, if you're wondering what that is, that's because I put the um, roars in with the JPEGs because I'm uh, I'm, I'm scum. So you can see what, um, well, obviously by now, the moment's basically passed because everyone knows that an airplane coming towards you looks better than, it's like, would you rather look at someone's face or, um, face or their ass? The vast majority of people, um, you'd rather look at their face. And if you'd rather look at their ass, you're not going to complain about looking at their face, I imagine, unless you've got, unless that's your thing. My point is, you want to look at the front of the aeroplane. So once it's gone away from you, you're still going to take pictures of it, but you're really not going to get anything great. Um, but I think this one could have been um, good if I had been focused more on the cockpit than on the roundel. I think um, the roundel is definitely a lot clearer than the cockpit there. So uh, clearer is maybe the wrong word, sharper. Oh, by the look at the size of that rudder. Absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah. I, I actually, I usually um, prefer looking at the, uh, if we go back here, at the normal length Hercules, not the stretch Super Hercules, but, um, you know, I'll take what I've got. And uh, I think, yeah, so that's not that's not relevant. I think they're stretched. You can see, like, that section here um, has been added in. Uh, so the original Hercules was um, significantly shorter than that one. Um, yeah, I don't, did that start life as a normal one, or was it built as a Super Hercules? I haven't got a clue, and I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, so you know, it's just going away. Who really cares? Uh, do you think that part of the picture looks weird? Um, I hope not, because there used to be a tree there, and then I got rid of it. So yeah, I've got skills. There we go. So that was the Hercules I saw, and that those are my thoughts on that day. Um, since we're looking at some F-15s, let's have a look at some F-15s, shall we? Right then. So I think I've been up done my ways this day for um, seven hours or so. And it was cold. This was, um, was it? Was it January or February? Either way, it was not warm. And uh, what uh, was it? Yeah, seventeenth of January. It wasn't warm. It was not warm. How do I get rid of that? 
No, oh, go away. Go, go away. You'd think I'd know how to work this by now. Escape. No? Oh, oh there we go. Go away. Full screen. There we go. There is, this isn't going to be edited. Uh, well, you're not what no one's even even what if tell you what if you've got this far comment the word banana um, Yeah, so I'd been up here for a long time and It was cold and nothing had come past and then all of a sudden five f-15s come through um, uh, By the way interesting thing about um, Yankee aircraft that LN there means it came from RF Lakenheath. So if you look at the two um, letters on the fin then uh, you know what it is, and I th I'm I'm sure this is an F-15E. I've no reason to believe it's not. Um, yeah. So you know, just seeing these come through, and that was that was nice. Um, just see that nice pictures. Um, I think of the five, that one and the first one are the worst. Um, I, I think that one's good. I think that one's good especially you can see the um, exhaust there that one it's just not quite as sharp I don't think it's a bit cold I could change the color tint but at this point I can't be asked uh, I, I hadn't noticed this before but there, there's a little bit of shadow there that um, someone pointed out to me and I, I won't forgive him for pointing that out to me because it's annoying now and that one I think is nice because uh, well, just look at it it's nice and sharp nice and close I've noticed as a general rule when the Americans come through Dunmel Vase, um, you're pointing your camera at the sky. And when the RAF come through, you're pointing it, you know, basically at your level. And if the Royal Navy comes through, um, it's, you're pointing it at the ground. But then again, I've only seen one Royal Navy aircraft come through, and it was a Merlin. And helicopters are allowed to fly lower. But Jen, what I'm saying is the Americans fly too high. You know, these are these are top top guys def in defending America in the name of liberty, but they're not flying as high, as low as um, RAF Tucanos and Hawks. Uh, what else are we going to look at? Uh, let's have a look at my 18th birthday. This is what I did on my 18th birthday. What did you do on your 18th birthday? Did you go out to a to a pub and get drunk and, and dance around with people? Yeah, I, I sat on the side of a mountain for a bit. Uh, Hawk T2 coming through. That's really, that's a bit, it was really bright. I got sunburned. Um, yeah, so this really bright, harsh direct sunlight isn't really great for photography, but I'm not going to complain with the amount of aircraft that I saw that day. Oh, God, come on. I had a swollen face on my 18th birthday. I don't know why my face just decided to swell up and then it went down. I went, uh, I also had a headache all that year. Anyway, um... Yeah, so nice picture of Hawk T2. And that's what I'm saying about the panning. If you can keep it so that your camera is, um, you know, station relatively stationary um, relative to the aircraft and you can get some nice panning, go for it. It looks great. Um, this one, you know, if we allowed, allow it to load up properly. Please say you're going to load up. That's, that can't be it, can it? There we go. Yeah, that's quite nice. But again, you've got the R send there. You've got it side on. That one's just nicer to look at than that one. And we got the same Hawk coming through again. Now, I thought on the day um, that I'd saw, seen two Hawk T2s. No, I saw the same one twice. Um, but I didn't know that until they edited them. See, that, look how low that is. Anyway, yeah, so lovely picture, just generally. Then we got a Tucano, rest in peace. Not going to see them anymore. Uh, replaced by the Texan. Um, I would be excited about the Texan entering service, but honestly, who can be excited about the Texan? <laughs> Uh, I like this picture. It's quite nice. Um, that, so that's the pupil in the front and the instructor in the back, and it looks as if the instructor's hanging on for dear life. But you know what? That student, he passed his RAF aptitude test, and you know what I didn't do? I I, I didn't. Um, so <laughs> all credit to him. I'll, I'll take it again when they let me. Uh, yeah. Really nice to see them come through. Now, um... Uh, there was some photographic bastardry going on here. Um, now, in the original photo, which I can't show you because um, um, I'm going to tell you a sad story. Get get the tissues, not for that. Um, so I kept all my photographs on a two terabyte hard drive from the end of 2016 to the end of 2019. Uh, so I had three years worth of pictures on there. And um, then what I do is I sort through the pictures 
and I'd um, find all my favorite ones and I move them into a separate folder and then um, I'd edit them and then I'd um, save them and then um, the good ones would be on a, a, a laptop as well as a hard drive and then they'd also be uploaded to um, the internet so I would have a copy there and then when I got another laptop and another hard drive all the best ones get so I've got about four backups of the good ones but that original hard drive it, it died um, at the start of this year which um, I'm very sad about uh, yeah which so that's unfortunate and so I don't have all the little ones that I don't need anymore uh, which, you know, it doesn't really matter at least didn't lose all the great ones, but it's still sad. Anyway, yeah. Oh, I didn't tell you about the bastardry. Yeah, so this top, um, this side of the fuselage here and here was way, way too bright. So what I did was I painstakingly zoomed in and selected it all, and then in Lightroom, and then I... Uh, meddled with it in Lightroom, and I reduced the exposure just on that part of the... Um, the aeroplane and to make it darker and this was the first time I tried doing it and now I look I did a really really bad job here I mean look at you can see that there that's not how it's supposed to be what's this line doing it looks like I mean that looks if you didn't know like it's got a massive crack down the um, paddling but it's not it's just me being rubbish uh, note to yourself increase the feathering this is just appalling. Um, uh, that's not too bad, but this is that's proper bad. Um, I need to get one of those electronic pencils with a pad. You know how like artists do, where digital artists and stuff. I want to get one of those for my room, um, but I'm not going to because let's be honest, I'm not good enough. Um, yeah, here we got a Hawk T1 coming through. I love the Hawk T1. The proportions are much nicer than the Hawk T2. And uh, apparently they've got better performance. Um, a tornado pilot told me that. Yeah. Just really nice. And again, in the original pictures, which I can't show you because my um, hard drive killed itself, um, I had a really, really nice picture, really close up, but I just cut off like that bit of the nose so you can't see it now. So, you know, if it's cut off, then... Right, this is the number one thing that will improve your photography. Just learn about composition. Um, just learn anything about composition. That's not in the middle. It's on purpose. Um, say that's about a third of the way across the screen. Google rule of thirds. Um, yeah, composition, just number, number one. You've got to know about composition. Uh, these are some F15s coming through. You can tell there's actually a really old F15 um, because it's still got the D-Day stripes on from when it um, served in the Second World War. So there you are. Oh, God, someone might have believed that. Uh, yeah, going home. Um, again, that's just the sort of thing that you edit because you got, you know, you wish you had more good photos, so you just edit one of the crap ones. Uh, more Tucanos coming through. More Tucanos, more Tucanos, more Tucanos. Oh, look, it's a Tucano. Oh, what's that instructor doing? Zoom in. He's filming. Look at that. He's filming on his phone. Excellent. No, that's cool. Don't report him. It, I, I, no, seriously, don't report him. He's allowed to do that. You'll you'll just annoy the air force, and um, you know they have the capability to drop five hundred pound bombs on your head. So I really wouldn't um, piss them off. Did I do any bastardry here? See, you can always tell if I did any bastardry, um, which is what I'm going to refer to it as from now on, by looking for the little mistakes. And I can't see any little mistakes here, so I didn't tamper with it. There we are. Yeah, so that was that was what the net product of my eighteenth um, birthday. Oh, I, oh, my year thirteen prom was that day as well, wasn't it? Oh yeah, so I also um, drank some whiskey, danced with my friend on the floor, and then got covered in um, glow stick juice, which isn't a euphemism. That that actually just happened. Um, what am I looking at now? Uh, going here. Yeah. So um, essentially. I, I thought, you know what, I want to make some money out of photography. I have already made some money out of photography. I think it's about 200 quid from selling calendars and 
um, taking pictures of um, my best friend's mum's dog. Yeah, the only person who's actually hired me for photography is my best friend's mum. And I'm very, I'm very, I, I really appreciate it, but that is a bit pathetic. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I would thought, right, I'll upload some to a um, stock photo website. Yeah, so um, I submitted some pictures to Shutterstock. Which ones did I submit? Not that one. I submitted this. Yeah, I submitted that. I submitted that. Um, what else did I submit? I submitted one of Elaine. Um, not Elaine, as in a person I don't know anyone called Elaine. Um, it's, you know, a, a country lane. I thought it was nice. Another one that I haven't don't seem to have in here. Uh, where is it? Uh, is it in here? Yes, it is. And I also submitted um, that one. So I submitted four pictures, and overnight they were all rejected, which... Um, you know, it's about, you know, they can reject what they want if they've got to maintain a standard. But um, I've seen pictures on Shutterstock that are not as good as these. I'm not saying by any means I'm the best or even top half, but I'm not the worst. But, you know, those, there are worse pictures um, than that on Shutterstock. And they rejected them for being um, noisy or grainy and shaky, which I I disagree with. Um, frankly, they're not. I think what's happened, obviously no one, no, a real person hasn't looked at it. I think what's possibly happened is they've looked at that. The algorithms looked at the background where I'm panning and gone, oh, that's blurry. Can't have that. Honestly, I've no idea what's going on, but um, you can tell me in the comments, which you won't because no one's watching this, um, if you think that's awful, if you think that's worth, you know, Oh, by the way, if you say anything you like and you want to buy it for me, leave a comment. <laughs> I'll do a deal with you. Um, yeah, but this one, I really don't understand. You know, I suppose the clouds aren't the clearest, but then again, those clouds are actually a fair distance away. And I'm focused on Kirk Fell there. That's Kirk Fell. This is Kirk Fell from Great Gable and Cumbria, by the way. Yeah, that's not blurry. I don't know what I don't know what they're on about. Anyway. Yeah, so, mm. so the so these are the pictures I picked out that I might consider submitted to a to a stock photo website. That doesn't mean these are my favourite pictures. These are the ones that I think anyone might conceivably buy. This one isn't great. I think I took that in twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen. When when did I take that? Uh, twenty eighteen. There we go. Um, it's not brilliant. Oh god, I have to go through this malarkey again. I? <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it's not brilliant. The highlights are pretty blown out, but the train looks nice, so it gives a shit. Um, that's an Italian C27, or not, as my um, aerospace design lecturer said, a C130. You think you think if you're an aerospace design lecturer, you should be able to tell the difference between that and a C130, which is a Hercules, which is what I was showing you before. Now, one big um, difference you may be able to notice is the... The different number of engines um you think that would stand out to someone who lectured on aerospace design and the shape of the cockpit is completely different but no okay fair enough, fair enough yeah. anyway yeah that's the same one um yeah no i think that looks quite nice uh that's a robin because uh you got to do something a bit normie every so often haven't you uh if you don't like me using the word normie don't worry you can't hate me more than i already hate myself uh that's a chinook doing um amazing schnook things uh there's a video on youtube called um swiss pilot does you know uh chinook display or something along those lines um and it is an amazing display from a swiss pilot or is it swedish i think it was swedish actually sorry sorry sweden and switzerland um but really you two should have had you know made more effort coming up with your names then shouldn't you um yeah and i i like that video it's good it, it's amazing pilot but it's a sea knight not a chinook learn the difference um yeah there you go um that's a merlin coming through again i don't think that's brilliant that's that is um iso 800 um but it doesn't it doesn't it's fairly sharp it's not that bad uh, that's an SU-27 Russian aircraft, um, Ukrainian owned though. Um, the commentator at Riyadh, which is where that picture's from, told us that apparently in, uh, was it 1989 at the Paris Air Show where the SU-27 was first displayed, everyone in NATO shat themselves and frankly I would too, but uh, it's antiquated now so it gives a 
Uh, yeah, Tornado, um, most perfect airplane ever to be designed. Absolutely love Tornadoes. Uh, as a Typhoon, also absolutely beautiful. Would love to fly them for a living, but I will have to pass a lot of tests and interviews to get in. So, fingers crossed, kind of practice my interviews. Uh, yeah, those are some Godways in uh, the land of Scots. Spitfire. Oh, is the Spitfire more perfect than the Tornado? It is actually more perfect. Yeah, uh, that's a bird. That's that's a very different bird. I prefer, between these two, I much prefer that one. That's a much nicer bird. Uh, Bombay, Bombay Open. Yeah, lovely. Lovely, lovely. Um, that's a mountain. There we go, mountain. Red Arrows, best display team I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot before any of you comment, ah, Blue Angels are better. I've not seen the Blue Angels, so take that. <laughs> yeah, take that with me, you getting to see a display team that I haven't. I would love to see Blue Angels. And um, I have seen the Thunderbirds, and I honestly thought that um, the Red Arrows were better. So, uh, yeah. Uh, that's a wall. Red Arrows again. Uh, that's an Apache. Very, very nice. Uh, here we have um, what I like to call a Harrier, and lots of other people like to call them Harriers. That's a Spanish-American-British aircraft. It's a Spanish version of an American version of a British aircraft. Absolutely lovely. Those are some deers. Deer. Yeah, that's the plural. Deer is the plural. We should change that. It should be deers. Fight me. Uh, that's Great Gable. That's where I was standing for the um, sunset picture that got rejected, but I'm um, facing that way. Uh, that's Skidor. It's Blencathra. I live on the other side of that. Uh, you know, a couple of miles. This is I, I, this is on the way up Scarhill Park. I don't actually know what this block is called. It's called Jeremy. Uh, that's a bird. It's a buzzard. Buzzards are far more interesting than little like sparrows and stuff. There's a couple of deer. That's another deer. Uh, that's the sunset. Uh, that's that's the same sunset, but not as zoomed in. Uh, Ken Ken Gorms. Um, yeah. If they if they aren't Ken Gorms, I'll I, sorry Dad. Um, yeah, that's sunset again. Uh, that's Lake Strict again. Um, All's water is behind me and to my right in that picture, but you can't see it, obviously. Uh, there's another hawk. You've seen that picture. You've seen that. You've seen that. You've seen that. You've seen that. Uh, you haven't seen that. That's Cosford. Um, thank you for taking me there, for my best friend. Um, it was a very, very nice day. There. Uh, tornado. Beautiful, beautiful aircraft. That's a boat. That's the, another boat. Well, it's the same boat, actually. That's all cute. Um, there are lots of je there were lots of jellyfish um, in the water there. Yeah, luckily I didn't get stung. Um, maybe I'll tell you about that trip one day. Although I won't. Um, that's a seal. Those are some cylinder cocks. I think they look absolutely lovely. I think that picture's great. That was um, rejected by 500px for having um, little commercial value. Um, so up yours 500px, I think that's a wonderful photo. F-16, um, for now, the tail later disintegrated. Um, not not majorly, just the trailing edge of that um, elevator. Or is, it, or is it a stabilator? That's a stabilator, but it also, I think, does roll. So that will make it an uh, elevon. Con rear control surface. If it were a ship, that would be the um, starboard quarter. But it's not it's an airplane, that's an F-35A from the United States Air Force. Uh, that's the street in Sheffield. Um, and uh, I took that picture before I knew what that what Extinction Rebellion was and what their logo was. If I had known, I'd have cropped that out. Uh, but as it is, it happens, I don't, I don't care enough to change it. Uh, that's, that's most of a tram. Uh, that Sainsbury's is pretty good. Um, yeah. Oh, although I did get semi-mugged outside, it's fine. Um, yeah, you, you might notice that, oh, that, that sign is very awfully illuminated, Douglas. What did you do? Well, I was standing there with a shining a torch at that random sign like a dickhead for about an hour. And then a guy came up to me and tried to say that his rugby team was better than mine. And that's not true because history rugby is the best. Uh, that's that's just some irony. Uh, if you're confused um, about what I'm talking about, uh, you, yeah, for, for some of these stories, you might need a brief synopsis, synopsis of my life. Uh, yeah, born in Cumbria, lived there for 18 years, um, applied for the RAF, got rejected, went to Sheff University of Sheffield for a bit, coronavirus happened, now I'm back in Cumbria. There we go. Oh, and um, I pop up and down 
to Sky when, you know, every so often as well. Um, that's the Saab Gripen, beautiful aircraft, nice and Swedish. Um, that's the top of Binzi facing. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to tell you which um, of the cardinal directions I was facing in. You tell me in the comments, and if you don't know which direction I'm facing in there, you should frankly be ashamed. Uh, that's a Jacano. Um, I have a full colour version of that as well, where it's not just the light serving colour. And I asked several people which one they prefer more, the black and white or the colour. They all said colour, and I disagree with all of them. So that's the one I'm going to try and put on this dock site. That's a beach. Uh, a point about long exposure. Um, I think that if you're going to do long exposure on water... Um, it either needs to be um, unidirectional, uh, monodirectional. Basically, it needs to be flowing in one direction, or it needs to be still, or it needs to be crashing around and going in loads of different directions. Um, not just a normal beach going in and out and in and out, um, because it just can, becomes misty. And especially if it's like small waves like this, it looks a bit boring. So what you do here... Um, by the way, if you think this is an awful photograph, then you can ignore everything I'm talking about because, um, basically, you could, you should respect my opinion as much on photography as much as you respect these pictures I'm showing you. Um, you can see you we've got the this nice flow that it looks like it's receding. That's because this is only a half a second exposure or something. Maybe it's two seconds. It's between one and half. That's not... You get the gist. It's a very short exposure. What's that? Uh two and a half seconds oh well i'm a dickhead then it's two and a half seconds right two and a half seconds that's not in the grand scheme of long exposure very long so i'm only taking the photograph whilst the waves are receding going this way um and so you get that lovely flowing look um if you did it um for any longer than that you'd start having the waves coming back in and it wouldn't look as nice so that that that's my um, two cents on um, long exposure um, photography at the beach. Um, yeah, Typhoon taking off. Beautiful, beautiful aeroplane. Um, I think that's that's Nape's Needle there. Um, and we've got climbers. I didn't realise until recently that my photograph had climbers in. Or I did know and I'd forgotten. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't ever want to climb an Nape's Needle. It looks... Um, because there's a big crack in it, basically. There's a big crack in Nape's Needle, and it's going to go one day. And with, you know, my luck, be, it, it would be the day I climbed it. And uh, I'm at the, at the moment, uh, I quite like breathing, so I'm going to keep doing it. Yeah. And also, look, it gets up to, like, level 6A on the way up Nape's Needle, I think. And I'm, I'm fine. I can cope with 6C. But um, 6A, mm, I'd rather not, 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 need not yet at least. Uh, beautiful typhoon there. Oh, yes, Collingsby um, taking pictures over the fence. Again, yeah, really like that. Getting those head-on shots are really good. And you think it's simple, but it um, getting a head-on shot if you've never tried it. But if you have ever tried to get a, an aeroplane bang on straight when it's um, turning, you know it can be quite difficult. Um, yeah, that's the same day I took the picture of um, the one that got rejected and the one with Nape's Needle in up um, Great Gable. I think that was my third attempt at scaling Great Gable, which is pathetic considering it's less than 3,000 feet. Uh, no, what happened the first time? Um, yeah, Dad Dad dropped his car keys, so he had to, No, he, d he dropped his jumper, which had the car keys in, out the back of his rucksack, and um, so he had to go back and find them. <laughs> Because it wasn't a case of if we found them, it was a case of when we found them. Um, what was the other time we failed to get... Oh, no, maybe it only took me two tries to get up Great Gable. Fair enough. I'd probably been up there when I was, like, eight, but, you know, not since. Seen the F-15s before. That's an F-35B um, tearing it up. Now, you can tell it's an F-35B because it looks... You know, it's got quite a broad bit behind there. The F-35 is very streamlined along its spine. The F-35B is a bit bulky. And the F-35C has enormous wings, so that's how you can tell the difference. And also, if it's hovering, then it's either a B or something's gone really badly wrong. Uh, yeah, that's um, some valve gear on a um, Thompson B1, and I think it looks very, very nice. 
Um, that's an A400M doing something that is absolutely astounding. Now, I will always say I prefer the Hercules over the A400M, even though I'm pretty sure the A400M is, on paper, it's definitely better, but it's not as proved as the um, Hercules, and it doesn't look as nice, but that is mental. They can do that straight after takeoff. You didn't have to climb and then dive to gain a lot of speed and then do that. No, that was immediately after takeoff. Amazing. Obviously, it was empty. Uh, yeah, that, that's the same A400M this time doing something quite sensible. B1 and uh, Merchant Navy, uh, Armathweight Viaduct, very nice. Uh, you might think that's a bit of dirt on your screen, but it's not actually, it's a pigeon. Mm. Not allowed to shoot them anymore. Or are you? I don't know. You should be allowed to shoot them. I, in my old house, I mowed the lawn. I mowed the lawn in this house as well. I just mowed the lawn because it's a shit job, so I do it. Um... A pigeon would come along into our birch tree, sit there, break off twigs, drop them, fly off. So I'd have to come around and um, collect all the twigs. So I said, right, next time um, that comes along, I'm going to shoot it. And it never came back. <laughs> so I never got to shoot the bloody thing. Yeah. Um, SU-27, I think that's a nice picture. Puma, best, oh, the good thing to come out of France. That is the good thing that came out of France. Uh, Bahamas, that's the Bahamas. If you want a picture of Bahamas, that's the Bahamas. Uh, mountain. And then we've got C-130 coming through. Oh, and that's the F-16. Uh, you know, I said it's tail disintegrated. I was exaggerating. But, um, oh, hang on. It's not supposed to look like that. And if you're wondering what this purple is, I am I think that's called chromatic aberration. So now you've got the buzzword, you can um, Google it instead of having me explain it, because I don't want to. <laughs> because I can't. Uh, oh, you know you know, in science with, like, lenses and... Look, I got an A at G an A level physics. I didn't get a, a, an A star, so um, that's Gaiden. Yeah. I don't... I've been recording for too long, so um, that's, that's today's little look at photography. If this has any positive reception at all, I'll... Um, Possibly do another one. Um, come on, full screen. That's the Mona Dam. Um, hasn't got as many holes in it as it should. Well, it has more holes than it should, but they're not as big as they should. What I'm saying is they should never have repaired it. Um, yeah. So, uh, you may be wondering why I'm actually doing this. Uh, the real reason is, um, if... You know, I feel sorry for people in real life when I talk to them about photography. Because as you can tell, I think I've been talking for about an hour now. Because my throat's starting to kill me and I've run out of tea. No, I'm not quite. I've run out of tea. Um, oh, God, I think I'm fucking hilarious, don't I? Yeah, I feel sorry for people in real... Because if you start talking to me about something I'm interested in, um, I can talk for hours. Like, Harry, I, I won't... Like you, you know, we were, we went to um, Broomhill Tavern together, uh, together, and you are a saint for sitting down and asking me questions and actually listening to what I said. So th thank you, mate. Now I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. So I feel so, and I I kept I like every fifteen minutes I was like, are you sure you want to hear me talk about airplanes and photography? So. Yeah, I feel sorry for when I talk about people when I talk about this in front of people in real life. So I figured I could talk about it and get it, you know, get it out and talk, have a sort of conversation. And uh, you only have to listen if you want to, which is nice. Um, which is why this will have zero views, but you know, at least I get to talk about my favourite things. Uh, so we're we're basically achieving our goals. Yeah. Now, a lot of people say that they're, 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 this is actually quite a safe place to talk about this because no one's going to get this far through. Even though, Aiden, I watched all 50 minutes of your shitty, shitty Star Wars Battlefront 2 video. Anyway. Oh, that's Ghent. Look, kayakers in Ghent. They're Belgian. Ghent's in Belgium. Yeah, it is. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, pe lots of people, especially my age, I don't know, they go from girlfriend to boyfriend, it's like so fucking fast. It's like they're afraid of being alone. They're just like, come on, being alone is not that bad. I've been doing it for 18 years and 11 months. Anyway, oh, Lysanders, I like Lysanders. Lysanders are underrated. Now, these are shit photos there. They're, they're, there's having highlights blown and then there's having no highlights. Um, and it's a fine, you know, it's a fine line. And I went way over that line. 
Yeah, Lysanders are so cool. If you don't appreciate Lysanders, go out and Google Lysanders, watch them. They are so, so cool. Anyway, yeah, so uh, I'll leave you. Leave you here. Um, obviously, no one's listening.